Would I be the asshole if I don't help my sibling with his custody case? I'm a 21F and I have an older sibling 24M. In July of 2020, he split with his baby mama and my family stepped in to help take care of his son who was about 9 months at the time. I became the primary babysitter watching the baby from about 7 a.m. when my mom left till she got home about 5, and then she would start taking care of him but I would still help when I can. While everything was still fresh, he went to court and at first, the judge had ruled that the baby mama had primary and an extended family member had to pick up the baby. I became in charge of drop off, and during this time I had a bunch of issues with his baby mama, so I took notes and made a couple of reports. Throughout the first couple of status updates, situations would happen and I would be writing things here and there. Throughout this, my sibling had months to build up a file and type things out but he waited until the weekend before the final court date to do it. While he and my mom were trying to sort figure out how to make a file I told them about my notes and after that he then basically dump any screenshots on me and had me file and sort them out for his lawyer. Everything was put in a Google Drive and thumb drive for him last minute. Granted I could have said no but I felt like it would have started something between the family. Well, the first trial ended with him becoming primary but nothing is set in stone so he has a final trial. In the first trial, the judge changed pickup procedures so I didn't have to deal with her unless my sibling was at work and couldn't be there to see my nephew off. He took over on pickup and drop off and was able to take notes. We've been telling him for months to write his notes so in case he wanted to I can type them up for him so his lawyer can have a file with readable notes. He never did and during the last week of July 2021, he found out his court date. It was supposed to be this past week but got extended by a week. My mom was talking to me about it today and mentioned how she told my sibling to send me his stuff so I can revise and organize it all, but I told her that I was sorry but I'm not helping him this time. He's had months to get everything done but he's waited last minute. It's not fair to me to try and fix everything all in one night. She seemed like she got mad because her tone changed and she said, fine but I'm telling your sibling that you said that. So will I be the asshole if I don't help out my sibling with his case? I feel like I might be an asshole because I'm not helping my family out but I don't think it's right for him to dump everything on me last minute. Edit 1. Sorry I forgot to mention, my sibling does work a rotational shift. Two weeks days, two weeks nights. In days I watch the baby till my dad gets home, if I'm in school or or all if I'm out of school my mom or sibling. On days I'm in school when I come back I watch him till either my sibling or mom comes home. On nights if I'm in school I'll watch him till my dad gets home. When I come back my sibling is usually up to watch him for an hour or two then I watch him for the rest of the evening till my mom comes home. I help if I can when she's home. Reading the comments it made me think, it was two separate times before this, the first he wanted me to rename and organize an evidence he had, second would be him having me organize his evidence and typing my notes. Both of which were not asked of me but I did it because my nephew, and I was either in a summer class or part-time spring class. Being the youngest and growing up with technology I understand it a bit more than my family so they usually come to me for help related to emails, typing, drives, and scanning, printing. My sibling and I are pretty close in age so I feel like he does understand a lot of it but is just lazy about it. I'm always open to answering any questions if I can. I've explained multiple time how to use Google Drive, phone and computer scanners, and thumb drives. He just waits. Not the asshole. Honestly, he should be doing this. It's his business, not yours. Hell, your mom should do this if she's that invested in him winning custody. You're not the one trying to win custody, it's your brother. And frankly, does your brother actually want to win custody or is he just trying to get back at his ex? I'm not hearing when he actually takes care of the child. And hash x200b. So unless things changed from when you first started, it's like you take care of the child during the day then your mom takes care of the baby at night? Not the asshole you said so yourself, you gave him the material with more than enough time to get it sorted and he chose to sit on it until the last minute. Nobody has presented any indication that this was your responsibility alone. It's his child, not yours. He needs to step up and take care of business. Is it possible that the pressure of parenthood is sitting a little too heavy with him and he subconsciously dropped the ball? Another thing, you need to stop being so available for unpaid childcare. It's his responsibility to take care of that, too. Not you and your mother's. Let mommy tattle to your brother that you think he should have taken care of business sooner. Not your fault. Not the asshole I don't know your financial situation, but if you have the means to move away from your family, you really should consider it. 
Family can hold you down, and it sure sounds like your family is poised to hold you back for a long time, while also making you feel guilty for everything. Soft not the asshole, but honestly what about the baby? Are both parents good caregivers? Will the child be better in your family home or the other? That's what really matters in this case, that kid. If you think that the kid would have a better life with your family I would do it for them. This is tough, but I think the most important consideration is your nephew's welfare. If you know that his mom is the less capable parent, despite how disorganized your brother is, then you should try to help for his sake but you also need to communicate with your brother that it he is leaning on you too much. If it were me I'd probably just go ahead and do it since it is, hopefully, the last time it needs to be done, but you're not an asshole for being burned out on the situation. Overall I think nah, just a lot of stressed out individuals. Not the asshole. It seems you and your mom want this baby more than he does. This is his responsibility and you've already done so much. Not the asshole. Not your custody battle, not your responsibility. Your brother needs to stop procrastinating, then depending on you to bail him out at the last minute and handle his business. If your mother chooses to tattle on you, so be it. Lack of preparation on his part, does not constitute an emergency on your part. He has had months to get this done, but he chose not to. Not the asshole. Am I the asshole for saying, if you don't want to be here you don't have to be. So I, 24F, still take yearly family vacations with my parents and siblings, 20F, 32M, 27M. We own a four-bedroom cabin and all typically bring a spouse, so. In addition to the four bedrooms on the ground floor and top floor, there's a mother-in-law suit my parents used to get, but in their old age they would prefer not to climb stairs so are opting for the ground floor room this year. No problem. This leaves the question of who gets the suite which is larger and better than the other options. To keep things simple, I nominated my oldest brother since he is the oldest and the only one of us who is married. Let's call my oldest brother Quan. Let's call my other brother Lamar and sister Lovey. Quan, Lovey and me are totally fine with Quan taking the big room but Lamar threw a bitch fit. For further context, we didn't have this discussion until all 10 of us were at the cabin since our parents last minute decided they didn't want the suite. Lamar says his girlfriend has social anxiety, convenient huh, and needs the extra separated space to be more comfortable. I say, why did she come to a crowded 10 adult cabin trip with such a bad disorder? The weekend will be filled with family activities or we will rarely have alone time since I stacked the itinerary with activities. Our rooms are for sleeping, not retreating from family on a family trip. I also said, why is she so uncomfortable now sleeping on the top floor when it wasn't an issue last year? The whole time Lamar's girlfriend kept averting her eyes from everyone and just acting weird. My other siblings agreed and said Lamar was out of line and if she needed such separation she could stay in the casita one mile down the road we also own. She started crying. I told Lamar's girlfriend that I'm sorry she's uncomfortable but, if you don't want to be here you don't have to and the casita is perfect for her condition, she cried harder and I got annoyed so I went to consult my parents. I try not to bother them about drama but I was upset as well. They comforted me, told Quan him and his wife would get the mill suite and told my brother Lamar if he doesn't want the play ball he can leave. Lamar took the casita but there was tension at the dinner last night and his girlfriend looks physically sick. IDK what's wrong with her? Maybe I should have let them have the mill suite. Am I the asshole? Edit. No one was rude to her and no one yelled at her except my parents. You only have my account to go off of and I'm telling you we were kind about it but firm. I got annoyed because as stated in the original passage, I told her I'm sorry she's uncomfortable and offered her the casita, which many of you remarked that a person with anxiety would love to have, and instead of accepting it she started crying. I'm allowed to be annoyed at all of this drama when I'm offering her great solutions and she doesn't take it. The Casita. Update. Thank you for voting me not the asshole internet strangers. I had a feeling I was in the right. Nonetheless I had a heart to heart with Lamar's girlfriend in private. She said that she doesn't blame me as she knew she looked crazy crying over simple questions. I comforted her and let her know it's no big deal and that I could have been much more pleasant about the situation. She did not truly care where they slept as long as she had space to take breaks, which I'm fine with as long as she participates in most pre-paid activities. We hugged and I told her I'd be more considerate in the future of her anxiety. Which is when she revealed that she doesn't actually have clinically diagnosed anxiety. She was just complaining to Lamar about her anxiety in general because of multiple factors and Lamar blew it out of proportion. So yeah, 
We're cool. Her and my brother might be cool? Who knows? I'm logging out. See ya next post. Not the asshole in my opinion. Perhaps the discussion shouldn't have happened right in front of her but if it wasn't a problem before, I don't understand why it's a problem now. I agree that if someone has social anxiety, why would they want to go on a social family vacation? Doesn't make sense. You're not the asshole for saying no to the request, but def you are the asshole for being so fucking mean about it for no reason to this poor girl who you made feel so awful she cried? Like come on, she didn't ask, your brother did. Maybe she was acting weird because she already felt anxious and uncomfortable that someone was bringing it up at all and she was anxious that someone would possibly react exactly the way you did rather than just saying no like a normal person. Like you just made her uncomfortable and not want to be there for no reason, and kept just rubbing salt in the wound. No wonder she wanted privacy from you. Esh. Lamar for throwing a bitch fit, but you also were an asshole for how you treated his gf. It's a pretty shitty way to talk to and about another person and it's clear she's pretty distressed about all this. Maybe she wanted to try and be around you guys as much as she could despite her condition? You are the asshole. It was Lamar's idea but instead of dealing with him, you totally attacked her, a guest and outsider, to the point of tears. And really, you, stacked the itinerary, to the point that nobody gets any downtime away from the family? Even if they want, need it. You sound controlling, bossy, impatient and unkind. You, don't like drama, but you absolutely escalated it here. Why not draw straws or something for the sweet instead of just taking it upon yourself to declare who gets it? You are the asshole. You were irritated with your brother and took it out on his girlfriend. She did not deserve to be humiliated like that and you owe her an apology. She was, acting weird, because you were arguing about her right in front of her, eyes. You were, annoyed, by her crying and genuine display of emotions? That is honestly pretty concerning, op. Just be kind to others. Esh. This should have been discussed between everyone calmly before the issue of bedrooms was raised, not the brother finally speaking out after bedrooms were already allocated. But you and your other family members' reactions to a potential future Sill's mental illness? Absolutely disgusting and you should all be ashamed of yourselves. Yes they should suck it up and use a smaller room despite her anxiety, but to speak to her the way you did about it is horrible. I don't care if you think you're cute and sassy. The way this entire post is written just proves you are the asshole. Not the asshole they arrived at the cabin already planning to sleep in one of the downstairs bedrooms. It was only when you got there that the suite became an option. However, it would have been better to not have the discussion in front of her that's on your brother for bringing it up then. It was a very awkward position for him to put his girlfriend in and no wonder she was, averting her eyes and acting weird. I would have done this too if everyone was discussing my anxiety disorder in front of me. Am I the asshole for telling an ex-friend that I can't forgive her? For some context. I keep pet fish as a hobby. I spend a lot of time and effort to keep them healthy. Two years ago I was friends with a girl named Mecca. Mecca was a very unstable girl due to her being in a very dysfunctional family. She didn't really have friends more like people who tolerated her. So the reason we no longer are friends is because one day while she was at my house she noticed my 20 gallon fish tank with two goldfish inside. Both were beautiful calicos. She'd asked me about them and I told her they were the goldfish I'd won at the school fair two years prior. She then asked me if she could have one and I said no. She looked at me and asked again if she could have a one. I said no again. She then asked me why and I told her because I'd work a lot to keep them alive since I got them. She thought about it then asked me why I couldn't just get rid of one and keep the other. I turned towards her and told her I said no now please stop asking about them because I'm not giving any of them up. I turned around to grab my bag when I heard the tank behind me shatter. I turned around and she was smiling while my tank laid shattered at her feet. I yelled at her and quickly picked both fish up and rushed them to my room. Where I had a 5 gallon single betta tank. I plopped them inside and took my betta out in a cup. I heard her laughing saying I had to give her one now since I didn't have a place to put them. I got mad and threw her out of the house telling her she was cruel and that I never wanted to see her again. Sadly one of the fish did die and I had to remove the other one with a distant family member. Current. I had gotten a message on Facebook from her asking if we could talk. I told her to be quick since I didn't really want to talk. She said that she was sorry about the tank from two years prior and that she had gotten help for her issues. I congratulated her on getting help. She then asked if we could meet up and talk because she wanted to be friends again. I said no. 
She didn't answer for a minute or two before asking me why. I said that while she may have gotten better and apologized I didn't forgive her for what she had done. She said that had been two years. I told her that it didn't matter that I didn't want to talk to her BQs I can't forgive her and that was final. I didn't answer any more messages but I want to know if I'm being too harsh here. I mean it has been two years and she says she has kanged. Am I the asshole? Mini update. So after posting this and looking over some of your comments I've decided that it is better to just block her on any social media account. I can't forgive her for what she'd done to spot, goldfish that died. I also can't trust her word on her getting better. So that's what I've decided. Also thank you to those that mentioned information about proper goldfish care and general pet awareness. I've gotten better at meeting my fish's needs as I still have the betta, male, years old, from the incident in a 5 gallon and a female bettas, 3 months since I got them, sorority and a 20 gallon. Also as for crimson, the other goldfish, she went to live with my uncle two states over in a goldfish pond. 20 foot by 20 foot 10 feet deep, she lives with 9 other goldfish. She's now 4 years old. Not the asshole it is your right to decide who you want to be friends with. You are not the asshole. Anyone truly asking for forgiveness knows that the recipient of a request can say no. If they can't accept that reality then they aren't apologizing for the right reasons. You can't forgive her for her senseless cruelty, and she needs to accept that and move on. Not the asshole. She killed your fish because she was upset you wouldn't just give it to her. If she hasn't figured out why that's a one strike and you're out deal as far as being friends in future goes, she hasn't actually learned anything productive about people not needing to do things just because she wants them to over the past two years. Not the asshole that is some scary behavior. It sounds safer to keep her out of your life. Not the asshole at all also interesting how they're willing to apologize. Yet I have not seen a single line where they want to at least offer to pay for the tank they destroyed or the fish they had killed due to their malicious intent. Edit. Changed negligence to malicious intent. Not the asshole I hope that whoever is helping her will tell her that that an apology does not equal forgiveness. Not the asshole. It's your life and you get to choose who is in it. Now, while I believe that in time you may find it possible to forgive her, that doesn't mean that she deserves a spot in your life. Help or not what she did was petty and cruel and ultimately ended in the death of one of your pets. To me, it seems her apology is half-assed if she can easily say, that was two years ago but you can't forgive me, that says she doesn't really accept the depth of what she did. To her, they were just fish. To you, they were precious. The apathy says she still hasn't learned anything. She clearly hasn't changed if she doesn't realize that killing your pet is a straight-up deal-breaker. Not the asshole. Am I the asshole for declining to be a babysitter for my one Y? Oh. Stepsister? TLDR. My dad and stepmother were narcissistic, I ran away, when NC. A few months ago we forgave each other. But now they are mad at me again for declining to be a babysitter for my one Y. Oh. Half-sister and moving back into the house. Am I the asshole for doing so? Long story short, my, 20F, parents divorced when I was 9. After the divorce, I had to stay with my grandparents for 5 years. He remarried in 2013 and in 2014 my stepmother had my half-brother. Then, they asked me to move in with them and I accepted. When I moved in, it was the worst time of my life. I was 14, yet they quickly became extremely demanding and aggressive verbally. I was allowed to go out with my friends only once or twice a month. I had to clean, to cook, to take care of my half-brother. Meanwhile all my stepmother had to do was to look after my half-brother. They didn't let me to get a job. I became very frustrated because I just observed how my teenager years went down the drain. My stepmother was one of the reasons everything went downhill, as she was equally abusive as my father was. I still somehow despise her because it seemed like he only cared about her and his new family, buying her cars, new clothes while all I got was a pair of jeans per year. When I was 19, I ran away. I couldn't deal with their behavior and lack of respect. I went NC and moved with my grandparents. I told them about everything, because I wasn't allowed to speak about that with anyone while I stayed with my parents, and they understood me. My parents were completely douches. My stepmother found out she was pregnant again. This year, in March, they called me to go over there and talk about things. I did and they, apologized? I was shocked, but I accepted it. Time passed, they started to treat me like an adult. They accepted my boundaries, one of them being that I do not want to move back as I have my whole life here. In June, my father told me that my stepmother found a job, 
her first job since they got married, and will start in September. He asked me if I can work as a babysitter for my half-sister and I politely declined, because I really can't look after another toddler. I have some mental problems of my own that I have to solve and to be honest, those five years I helped with my stepbrother were enough for me. After some weeks, I noticed that they wouldn't call me anymore and they got colder. My father started to get irritated with me again, telling me that he is very stressed, pointing out somehow that he is stressed also because I declined his offer. Now, he makes $2,000 per month. If he wants to, he can hire a babysitter if he wants. They both started to tell me that I am not helping out the family when in need and basically, the same old things, which made me feel like everything was just a facade to make me move in again with them. That I am careless and that this is not what a real family looks like. Now, am I the asshole for declining to be a babysitter for my one Y? Oh, half-sister? Edit. Half-brother and sister, not stepsister. Sorry, English is not my first language. Also, just to be known, I live in Eastern Europe, where $2,000 are. Pretty much, that is why I had to add it. Absolutely not the asshole. It was just a facade. I know this type of people well. They are only interested as long as they think they can take something from you. Even if there was no previous history of abuse on their side, you are entitled to say no when you need to take care of yourself. In fact, you are even entitled to say no just because you don't want to. Keep your boundaries and take care of yourself not the asshole. Go and see and see a therapist. There is too much here for you to properly unpack on the internet to strangers. Not the asshole. They can hire their own babysitter. Which made me feel like everything was just a facade to make me move in again with them. Because it was. You can't be the free babysitter if you don't live there. Go and see. They only care about what you can do for them. Not the asshole you are an adult. You are not obligated at all to do what they are asking. It's rather obvious that you were only brought back into your dad's home when you were 14 because they wanted a maid and nanny that didn't have to be paid. You are allowed to resent that. You are doing what you are supposed to be doing making a life for yourself. You keep working on the issues that are getting in the way you being the thriving, independent, happy person you deserve to be and don't feel guilty for even one minute about not returning to the Cinderella before the ball position your dad and stepmother have offered you. What was supposed to be in it for you? Not the asshole don't give narcissists second chances, this is always the result. Not the asshole, family does not equals built and babysitter. You are not some appendage they get to use as they feel entitled. Get out of there, for your own sanity and mental health. You may find this site useful when dealing with family with personality disorders. NTA. Their children, childcare problems are not your responsibility. You made it clear you are not uprooting your life for them because that's ridiculous. If you share a father your brother and sister are your half-brother and half-sister, not your stepbrother and stepsister.